the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being with us each and every single week. Email us, feedback at ami.ca. Follow us on social media at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag Ask Double Tap, and we will definitely get to your questions. If not today, we have a show coming up called Ask Us Anything, the Summer Edition, and we'll definitely field your questions then. I am Marco Flalo, joined each and every single week by Stephen Scott. Stephen, how are you feeling this week? We're, we're talking to a very, very cool individual going across the world uh, to Korea again, I mm. believe, uh, to a gentleman who is the co-founder of a company called Dot Inc., who has a product that we're going to be talking about today that was unveiled at CSUN. Not the first to come up with a product like this, but definitely the most promising. And that is a full-on braille display. I'm not talking about just words here. I'm talking about bringing images and graphics to life in, in a tactile form. Has this ever been done before? So it has been done before. Uh, well, attempts have been made. Uh, I mean, for example, there was a company uh, a few years back, a good few years back now, called Blitab. And their purpose was to create essentially a Kindle type device, right? So, you know, you would have a, an A4 sized sheet sty style device that had braille lines on it, braille code on it. That means that you could read, for example, a book. But, you know, like a Kindle, right? So, you know, you would have a Kindle, you'd read the whole page rather than a line at a time as you do with a Braille display. So that was one. And then they tried to develop a graphical version of that, which never really took off. Another company, which is uh, an organization kind of made up of different charities around the world, uh, Orbit Research, they've come up with a, a product called the Graffiti which uh, was announced at CSUN a couple of years back. Uh, again, that hasn't quite managed to make it yet, although that project does, because it's a number of organizations around the world, it's a little bit slower to produce and it is non-profit. So there's not as much of a rush, some would argue, but with this product, this new product from uh, the dot company, this is incredible because what they're trying to do is develop a product which is ultimately for educational purposes. Now, of course, arguably anybody could buy this, eventually when it becomes available. But this is a product which can really make the difference when it comes to uh, education, uh, for people who want to work in science, for people who want to work in mathematics, the ability to have graphical information presented to you on a screen. Uh, the way that the company talks about it, it, it's like a monitor for blind people. Now, That's the way to think about you it. You know a little about this company. What have they done before? What's their history? You know, we're definitely going to ask, of course, their co-founder, but mm. these guys have created other devices before, right? So one key product that I think a lot of people will be aware of, and that is the Dot Watch. Now, this was a really cool watch because, you know, it was the first time we saw a smartwatch, not just a regular watch with time, but actually a smartwatch that had Braille on it. So you actually had a circular face with uh, six Braille cells on the screen, on the display. And you could read the time, obviously, but you could also read text messages when they came in, right? So you just put your finger over and like a display does, it kind of moves along and, you know, you just have your finger sitting on top of it and you can read the message as it comes through. So if you were to send me a message, I'd be able to read it in Braille on my smartwatch. And there were other things it could do as well, a really cool device. That's the one most people know of, but, and, and I will say as well, I think there's talk of a second dot watch coming soon. We'll hear more about this from our guest later. Uh, and if not, we'll certainly be talking about it in the next couple of weeks uh, or months when we hear more about it. Because what's really interesting here is the way they've developed the dot pad that we're going to talk about, they're taking the learning of that and they're putting that into the new dot watch. So very exciting uh, new products coming. Uh, in the world of Braille. I'm curious to know what the uh, what the experience has been thus far because I can imagine with some of these other iterations of other devices from other companies, the challenges have probably just been technology. I mean, getting technology to the right size and the right form factor and the right cost point, you know, is really what makes any device or any new invention uh, gives it that barrier to entry. And I can't imagine something like this with very specialized technology has not been a cheap endeavor. So I'm curious, you know, to ask, to ask or ask, you know, 
a bit later on about that specifically. You know, what is the price point expected to be? Because I know when they unveil and talk about devices like this, like the Dot Watch, for example, you know, it, it's not an expensive device. It's attainable by anybody. So, uh, you know, I wonder how much technology has played a part in the timing at which we're seeing this. Well, I think it's um, it's a lot of research and work has gone into this. And, and the, the hardest part is the dots themselves, the actual pins that push up, because in most cases that's a mechanical, right? So that costs a lot of money, because, and it costs a lot of money per cell. So every single Braille cell has to be created, and that's six individual pins. And you know, when you add up how many you would need, I think over 200 you need for the display, that's a lot of money. So how do you bring that down? Well, of course, it's not just about uh, you know, finding ways to make the technology uh, better and, and therefore bring the cost in that way. But it's about making this device as available to as many people. Now, it's interesting because, of course, I mentioned education, but there are so many applications for this. And the other big news out of all this is that not only did uh, Dot Inc. actually create this, they created it in association with Apple. And in one of the latest releases of iOS, in fact, most recently, well, one of the most recent releases of iOS 15.2, actually, from that point onwards, there's now an option in the voiceover rotor, which you can access if you've got voiceover turned on, and you have one of these dot pads to enable you to connect your iPhone to this device. And you could go into, say, the Notes app, for example, and draw a picture of a flower. And then that image would be replicated on that display. I mean, how cool is that? They've done that already. So the fact that that integration's already happened is incredible. And I think a lot of us are really looking forward to seeing how this goes in the future because we can now see the potential. And obviously we did see that at CSUN and we're really looking forward to hearing more about it today. Well, Stephen, let's let's take a break and let's bring our guest on and let's get into all of this because I'm super excited to find out more from the horse's mouth, as they say. It is Double Tap TV with Stephen Scott and Marco Flalo. We're gonna take a quick break and find out all about the dot pad. So if you want to get involved, feedback at ami.ca. Of course, the email address on social media, it is at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. We'll be back in just a moment. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being with us each and every single week. Feedback at ami.ca, the email address at Double Tap Canada on Twitter with the hashtag Ask Double Tap. Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott with you this week, and it's time to introduce our guest. He is the co-founder for Dot Inc., Eric Julian Kim. Eric, let's start off by telling us a little bit about the company and some of the history. Yeah, um, we established our company in 2015. Um, we, you know, myself and co-founder Key. Uh, uh, found this company to eliminate barriers for disabled people, include visual impaired and other uh, disabilities. And our first product was called Dot Watch, which was the first Braille smartwatch at the time. And luckily, we our first goal was making the most affordable, most um, kind of tiniest um, technology that can be used for a tactile product for Braille and everything. So, um, you know, through by doing that, we could actually make the most efficient and uh, cost efficient and, you know, in many ways, um, the, the best version of the um, tactile, you know, technology. And we are now using that technology to create the whole monitor, tactile monitor for uh, blind people. So is this using new technology, Eric, or is this something that's been done before that you're developing into a new product? This is actually the first technology that make that happen. So um, we're really excited that we can impact students, impact the life of the professionals, impact the lives of everyone. Now, Eric, this isn't a mainstream product right now, right? By, by that, I mean it, it's designed for people who have low vision. So how do you keep pricing down and make something like that affordable that's not for the masses? When we first met uh, blind pe people who use a uh, Braille display, we were shocked. The price and, you know, it's really, it was kind of competitive to get it um, with the uh, fundings from government. So, I mean, I we could not understand. I mean, there are so many people out there 
who have the problem with the you know the eyes and um, it's more than 285 million visually impaired people and 40 million blind people out there. So we wanted to do something that can make fundamental changes. So first thing that we thought of is price. Let's make it price down. And second, what's the, what's the future in this industry? And the future was not just Braille, include Braille, but showing graphics and images and every characters. So basically it's building monitors. So we realized that as a fundamental problem of this market in everyone uh, waiting, kind of, you know, waiting until now. So our goal was to create that. So how did you solve that problem? We researched in many areas of the technologies and we found uh, some breakthrough point in magnetic technology. And right now, every Braille display uses piezo electricity. Uh, many, many devices uh, use piezo electricity technology, which use which is based on ceramic technology and it's really expensive. So one Braille cell costs more than, you know, um, 20 to $30. So like eventually if you create a device with 40 cells, you know, add up, you know, those kind of prices uh, and also devices. So it, I mean, it's, uh, we needed to make something really affordable to show Braille and also uh, tactile uh, graphical images. So. We researched this magnetic field with many universities and professionals about, I think, five years, and we made a really great uh, breakthrough point. Eric, seeing as we don't have the device here right now, can you describe the dot pad for our audience? Think of it as a tactile monitor, you know, and it has, you know, the dot pad that you saw on the news has 2,400 pins that works individually to create images um, and tactile graphics, uh, same as the Braille display hat, but it's more dense, you know, dense, um, you know, uh, position so that in equal distance we can actually create the images, not 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 in a Braille way, but of course we can show Braille. So basically, you know, it's it's a monitor. Um, so. Um, you know, like Braille display was like DOS OS and, uh, you know, DotPad is like uh, Windows or Macintosh graphical user interface OS enabler uh, technology. Now, Eric, I read that you formed a partnership with the American Printing House for the Blind, but also Apple as well. How did all that come about? Basically, the, you know, the partnerships and the development, co-development started uh, two years ago. And um, that was about the time that Apple's accessibility team made a, a voiceover functions for charts and images. So they tried to show images and chart through sound, you know, you know, up and down. You know, this, you know, you, you can check on the last year WWDC about it. So we thought that this is the perfect opportunity. Apple is thinking about showing graphics for uh, blind people. Why don't we just make it happen with DotPad and we can show real graphics for the first time in iOS. So that was the kind of a basic thinking. Obviously, Apple is the biggest company in the earth. So we didn't know that we could actually make it happen. But, you know, Apple's people, I think um, they're, they're, I mean, we, we felt that they're different. You know, they're, uh, most bright-minded people think accessibility as their core value. So we we really liked that, and we were kind of moved that we could not see in any other spaces. So we were really happy uh, two years ago we could actually make it. You know the, the connections and the you know the developments. And right now, in you know from fifteen point two iOS, it works. So you can check stock charts. You can see uh, icon images. You can see Apple's logo. Um, you can see all the images with edge detection uh, functions. And more and more app, more apps will be covered by AX Braille Map uh, API that created by Apple. And also we uh, we, we we contributed that. Um, so I mean, I think it's it's a historical mo moment, you know, that we can actually make a uh, difference. Uh, in the, in the, in the world. Um, and, uh, 
yeah, that, I think that's a Apple story that we have. What an amazing story, and there's so much more to come. So, so guys, stick around. This is Double Tap TV with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. Our guest, Eric from Dot Inc., is, is sticking around with us as well. So we'll be right back here on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being with us, Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott. And our guest this week is Eric Julian Kim from Dot Inc., the creators of the Dot Pad. Now, before we took a break, Eric, you told us that you got your start with Apple, but there's another big relationship here that Stephen mentioned, and that's American Printing House for the Blind. Tell us about that. 2020, around that time before COVID, at CSUN, we, we talked a lot about oh, it could actually happen, and APH also have a plan to make a holy grail of Braille. That single tablet has a graphical display and the Braille, you know, uh, you know, display, you know, at the same time. So, and APH wanted to change education because after pandemic, the you know, education for blind uh, students was really, really hard. So, um, we need to make it in digital way. So, there was really, um, um, I think, Big, big needs increasing, increasing needs uh, were in uh, out there. So, um, thankfully, you know, really thankfully, APH created the pro project, you know, uh, about making let's make a graphical, uh, you know, tactile display for having textbook uh, on the on that device, and let's do digital education and all the STEM educations uh, possible. So, uh, we applied that and they selected us. So we really happy um, as a startup, <laughs> you know, uh, AP is so big organization and Humanware is also a big company. So we are really happy to partner with Humanware and APH to contribute, uh, you know, to society and, you know, with our technology. So I know Mark alluded to this earlier, but you know, how, how do you keep these costs down, Eric? Because, you know, it's, it's quite an expensive device. So we, we see bigger potential here. So, um, of course, we want to cover Braille, Braille users, but we want to cover large volume of new new customers in in this. You know, you know. Uh, so, eventually, that will create bigger market and bigger budget and bigger you know quantity. So, in you know to create you know I mean to mass produce the device is really simple. If we have a larger volume, we can decrease the you know cost. So basically right now, what, what we're doing right now, you know, with uh, great partners are basically bringing, you know, our technology to actual uh, customers and we are changing this industry right now. So industries is going there right now. And I can, I, I believe, you know, blind students or blind uh, people who experience our technology and we think they cannot go back. <laughs> like with only Braille display. So we think that it will bring fundamental changes. And this is not just US problem. This is not just European problem. This is a global problem. So, you know, our whole point is really a global. How long do you think it'll take to drive the cost down? Are we talking years here, Eric? We see very fast changes right now. So like what PC, you know, PC is saying, you know, Many people use cost down. That's a really simple logic. So we see really fast changes right now. So I can I can tell in five years, we can decrease a lot of costs. One last question, Eric, if you don't mind. Uh, the Dot Watch, of course, was one of your first products. Uh, we mentioned it just at the top of the show. Um, is that still in production? What's the future with that? Um, you know, right now our focus is more Dot Pad and Dot Pad use different um, Braille cell, tactile cell. Uh, we use second generation of the dot cell, so uh, it's it's much better <laughs> than the dot watch. So we're really happy about it, and more and more uh, innovation is coming up. So next version will become you know pretty soon. So you know, we're gonna bring you know fresh air to this industry <laughs> as much as possible. So um, you know you will like it. You know you will like you will like it because we see so many happy smiles at CSUN and, you know, at our meetings. So, um, you know, you know we, we, we are really doing this with our, 
um, you know, we're, we're putting our life in this, you know, I put my 20s in this and I want to make people happy with our uh, innovation and I really mean it, you know, we're, we're putting our life in this and we want to contribute to society and, uh, you know, human society. So, you know, we're really happy, you know, we can actually, you know, enrich life. That is Eric Julian Kim, one of the co-founders of Dot Inc. Of course, you can find them all online there, of course, you know, demonstrating at CSUN. Man, Stephen, this has such incredible promise. I really hope this is one of those products that doesn't become vaporware. And I think from a company like this that has a history of actually putting out products, it's 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 more realistic than, than not. It is. It's the cost, right? And I know we keep coming back to it, but we have to. The cost at the moment is, is very high, but, you know, Eric seems very keen from what he's told us today to try and find a way to drive that cost down by making that product as available to as many people as possible. This could benefit a lot of people. I keep going on about education, but you know it's a bigger, bigger market than that out there who could benefit from this. So let's see how it goes. I'm with you. I really want to see this develop because this could make a real difference to people, a real difference, especially for those kids who want to get into maths and science, STEM world. Uh, you know, blind kids could get into all that with a device like this. Yeah, I can imagine just even for education, it doesn't have to be that cheap, but as long as it's attainable and they can get it in the hands mm -hmm. of people who are going to use it, it'll bring down the, bring up the popularity. But again, when you're yeah. mass producing a device, you know, for, for everybody without limitations, it's so much easier to drive the price down. Whereas it comes to something like this that has such, such specialized components, it's, it's pretty hard. But uh, we will see. We will absolutely see. Uh, on behalf of Eric, Julian, Kim, thank you guys so much for being with us this week. Uh, of course, head on over to uh, you know ami.ca and you can find out all about this episode, all about Dot Inc. And uh, we will speak to you again on our next edition of Double Tap TV. Thanks for being with us. Copyright 2022 Accessible Media Inc.